Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm Claire, this is Purple Poppy, and today we are on Short and Simple Tuesday. Now, those of you that are in the Facebook group, you would have seen my post about freebies on the Kofi site. Those of you that are on the Kofi site will have been alerted that they're there. And these were papers that I prepped for today. And today I want to talk to you about creating your own digital pages. Yeah, your own digi kit with stuff that you already own that's in your house. So <clears throat> this one, you can see, has got a music sheet and I don't know where, but I do own that. It's here somewhere. It's a memorandum. That's the Inland Revenue page that I showed recently from that vintage haul. This is a deed from a property. And this is a plaster cast that I did many, many moons ago of Hubby's Hand. It was part of my degree. So that's page one. Page two, you can see, again, I have laid out... Um, a newspaper, the Alpington Journal, and this particular one is dated 1926. Okay, I've laid on a rose. This is a rose that my grandson gave me last year, and it's actually dried and completely flat. So doesn't doesn't look like that at all. That looks sort of 3D there, doesn't it? This is a cork. There's a um, scrabble tile, and this is a lid, a lid from a jar. Okay, and then the next one, and I've double printed, so that's got the hand one on that I just showed you on the back of that one, so it's double sided. And then this one is an old dictionary this is my old um diary book that hubby got me a while ago opened up there this is a vintage photograph and this is an old postcard and just some lace because i needed to balance it so i put an old book underneath and i covered it with lace to make it balanced and then on the other side you can see i've used that it's not the same photo, I thought it was the same photo, it's a different photo. That's the dictionary open, and that's another book open. And this is the other side of that deed. Okay, so let's see how I did it, how you can do it. It's easy peasy. So on my desk, because I didn't want anyone to say, oh, well, I don't have vintage papers. I can't create something like that. I've bought things that I figure you've probably got at home. So I've got a jar of peppercorns because we grind our pepper. I've got a measuring scoop. I've got a spatula, pretty spatula. I've got a cookie cutter in the shape of a gingerbread man. I've got a rippled edge or a crinkled edge cookie cutter and because i was in the kitchen collecting all them i've bought my apron this is my apron now part of the reason i've bought this is because it's got this rose fabric it's got this gingham it's then got this stripy rose on the bow it's got spots and then it's got the big stripe area it's got the heart pocket and then it's got this spot bias binding. So depending on how we lay this, let's move them, we can get lots and lots of different things showing through. So I'm just going to sort of do this for now. Okay, like that. So we've got the stripe, the different stripe and the flower. And then what I'm going to do, now this is actually an old one that I have torn to pieces and pulled bits out of. But you must obviously not damage your cookery books. If you've got cookery books, if you haven't got cookery books, use something else. The only reason I'm using this cookery book is because we've got a bit of a cookery theme going on here. So I'm going to lay my book there like that. I'm going to bring in my measuring scoop. I'm going to fill it with peppercorns. 
I didn't want to throw them all over the desk because obviously then I wouldn't be able to reuse them. But that measuring scoop is nice and clean. So I could use that. We can even pop that under there if we choose to. Yeah, we can put our cookie cutter on. A different cookie cutter and then we can add our spatula now I'm just gonna stand up and see what that looks like in the screen mm. yep that looks quite good and then what you need to do really really simply is take your camera now obviously I can't use my camera because I'm recording on it so I've got hubby's iPad here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line it up and move it around until I get the image that I want okay so go down obviously you'll get a much smaller array of things in bring it up you'll get much more yeah now I think I'm gonna go just about there now I know you can't quite see that because the camera's not tall enough but if I take the picture like so I think I've taken the picture let me just have a look because obviously this is hubby's um, pad that I'm using here not mine I just want to have a look and oh what have I done here sorry it would be so much easier obviously if I could um, show you on my camera but um, using the camera to record in order to be able to upload it I can't do that so I'm just gonna go here right let's go into messages because I know I've sent him a message right go there do that again line it up to make sure that I got exactly what I wanted take the picture like so so now there you can see that is what I've got oh it's turned around <laughs> that's what I've got in my picture from what's on my desk now, I'm going to send this via Facebook to me from Hubby's phone. As you can see, I've just sent that there. So now, if I go in to my... I move those peppercorns before I tip them everywhere. If we go into my Facebook on my computer, it will come up. I can bring it up and then I can press Save Image save the image there i know you can't see what i'm doing which is why i'm talking about it very loudly i have saved the image on my desktop open it up press print it's thinking about it for a minute because that's quite a detailed photo make sure i've got it set in portrait because the photo was taken in portrait i'm going to press print and that is going to print itself out and then I'll go and collect it and show it to you in a minute. But let's just have a little look at other things we could do. If you so Oh, don't say the printer's not going to work now. That'd be typical, wouldn't it? It's so you didn't want to do a cooking one. But you did particularly like the striped fabric. Oh, it is working good. The striped fabric of the apron. Um, and let's say that you do have some books. So let's open up this book. I quite like that that page is torn. I can lay that there like that. You can use all sorts of things. I can unroll some string. I can lay that there. Um, I've got some rusty bulldog clip. I can put that on there. I can... Um, have a look at whatever papers that I've got you see there's that Orpington journal that I used in the other one we've got this lovely old check that came in that that pile of stuff so then I can do exactly the same again okay 
so I'm just going to press that I want to send take a photo for Facebook I'm sure you all know how to do that I'm just going to line it up press photo press send and there you can see there's the photo there's the photo again so really simple really easy and that gives you your very own look at that there it is your very own digi paper you don't need to buy from people although we know there are people that make absolutely wonderful digi kits and why would you not want to buy them but it's just a way of using things that you already own you know lots of people are tightening their belts at the moment because of the various situations that we find ourselves in due to you know the financial state of the world i'm not going to talk about that too much and there you go just like that look crisp clear beautiful digital page that you can then fold in half and make as an actual digi page or you could do turn it over so you can semi see it in the background while i'm working or what i'm gonna do is you saw this one where i printed on both sides yeah so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn up what is that that's just over an inch about an inch and a half turn it up like that okay turn it down and then i'm gonna fold my paper into three so i'm just going to do it roughly on this side wider than that one so line that one up like that and then this one we want to make sure doesn't come all the way so put that there like that and you can see that gives me a good fold area okay and then you can make yourself a very simple tag pocket by just folding that one over that way or if you prefer fold it underneath that way and this one i'm going to do the same thing with i'm going to fold that down like that that goes like that sorry you need to fold this back up okay that will go like that that will go i'm going completely mad i'm folding it all in the wrong way you need the fold up to be on the outside so if you want these in fold them in that way okay take your widest one put that in first take your shorter one and then tuck the short one in the long one press it flat make sure it's all in there and you've got a lovely little pocket area and then what I did was I tore up some of the other pages. Okay, I'm going to just, and I've stuck them to some card. You can see it's misprinted card on the back there. I'm just going to cut down there like that. And because there's a rose on there and there's a rose on here, I feel like it belongs together as a bit of a set. Trim that down like that and across the top i'm going to leave mine square i'm liking square tags lately but if you want to cut your corners then obviously you must cut your corners <laughs> and then that one obviously you can put some lace and ribbon and things but that one will sit in that pocket see because that fold up has made a pocket there okay and then i've got i'm going to use this one i think this one and i'm going to put this in that front fold up whoops like so and i can see well, that is anything but straight but then you're all used to that aren't you there we go okay and then that one i'm going to put in that front pocket there 
So you've got tag one, tag two, but if ever you want to, you can take your tags out, you can open it up and you can admire the beautiful paper. If you choose not to do it double sided, then this could all be journaling space. But I like it double sided so that when we tuck this in here, we've got some patterning at the back. You could even put one at the back if you wanted to and make three tags. The only thing is the, bo the bottom's not sealed in the middle, so it would potentially fall out unless you maybe put a decorative paper clip or something on it. And then you could put that one in that side. And then you could put the third one in the front. And just like that, you have created a completely unique digital kit, which you have used to make a three tag pocket with three tags or a three pocket holder with three tags in it. Just like that, look. There you go, tag one, tag two, tag three in this very pretty folder. And you can either obviously stick it onto a journal page or put it into another pocket. So there you go. Today, short and simple is making your own digi kits. Gather your bits together, get your camera out, have some fun. See you very soon. Bye-bye for now.